The Book of True Life, Teachings of the Divine Master, Volume 12, Spiritual Teaching 346, Love Each Other. 1. I come to give you my word, to polish your heart, to make your spirit feel my peace. 2. I am the light and the life, and whoever comes to me receives this grace. As a father, I suffer when you strip yourself of spiritual goods, when you go to your free will, feeding materialistic tendencies and making yourselves worthy of pain. If you suffer and weep, it is because of your own iniquity. But I come to take away from you darkness and to clear your path of thorns and stones so that you look for my path, so that you forget your past and only see your future. 3. I will always be with you. I will be the good counselor and faithful companion, and I will speak to you through your conscience, not to fall into temptation. 4. You are like a plant that I have grown. As a good gardener, I find myself among you, removing the nettle and separating the rootworm. I have been cultivating your spirit, so that it is in harmony with me. 5. You are the castaways to whom I have come to show the saving basket, so that you do not perish in the waves of the raging sea. Walk on water, as I said to Peter, but do not say to me like him, Master, save us, we perish. When faith, together with love, forms a single power, you will experience a great force in your spirit and even the same matter will be able to walk on water, because the power of your Father will sustain you, but never try to test your Lord. 6. Blessed is he who pleases the Father with his works, because I always reward him silently by giving him multiplication of what he has delivered. 7. Great is the number of the needy, the blind, the troubled, but to them I approach to give them my charity. 8. This manifestation will be among you until the year 1950 and will remain written in your hearts. But while that time is coming, I come to lead you so that you come closer to me. I have come to teach you, because the third era has arrived and in it you have heard the voice of the celestial trumpet that has awakened your spirit. Some of you have asked me, Father, why have you come to dwell on earth again? And I tell you, so that your spirit restores clarity lost. And truly I say to you, blessed is he who has penetrated in this restitution, because he will be in my kingdom, because he will have purified and fulfilled his mission. 9. You are a part of the chosen people of Israel to whom I have given a garment of light, so that you may rise up tomorrow as teachers, as guides of humanity. In this time I am calling all my children, and everyone who is with me and loves me, he will get up to fight and work. 10. Temptations still surround you, but the time I have announced to you will come, in which temptation will be bound, so that in your paths it is only my light that guides you. 11. You are in the time of struggle and work, in which you must purify yourselves and restore your past, because it is not your flesh to whom I have entrusted the inheritance, but to your spirit, which is the one that has flowed from me. 12. I have to purify the spirit, cleanse it so that it can be returned to the Father, to merge with my divine spirit for all eternity, to enjoy my celestial kingdom. 13. Beloved children who have arrived in small numbers, truly I tell you, my insightful gaze discovers my chosen ones who feel in their spirit that it is the time of my presence. They have not listened to my word as you, but in your spirit you hear a voice that tells you that I am again among humanity that I have come spiritually on the cloud. 
To some, I will grant to contemplate me with the eyes of their spirit. To others, through the foreboding. I make others feel greatly my love, so that they feel the presence of my spirit. 14. I am knocking on the doors of the heart of humanity. Some I find ready, others sleeping, because they have parked themselves in the various sects and religions, and for a moment have strayed from the path. But this is the time in which my ringing bell is making the call for all to come before my presence, receive the resurrection of your spirit, and unify to feel my peace on earth and reach the promised land. Parable 15 A great Lord, full of virtue and power, was on a high throne, and around him great multitudes, millions and millions of creatures, surrounded him. But none of these multitudes could approach the Sovereign. Only from afar could they contemplate him. But in their hearts they wanted to approach, to be very close to him. Suddenly a door opened, and in it appeared a lamb, dripping blood, and an inscription that said, Here is the light, here is the open door, to everyone who wants to penetrate. For everyone who carries virtue in his heart, come, come. A bright light was beheld, and the crowds, full of rejoicing, went towards that door. Some arrived and entered that mansion, but not all of them came, because they found thorns on their way, and they could not walk. Others found great barriers that prevented them from entering through that door. But that Sovereign, that Almighty Lord, from on high contemplated the crowds and said, Penetrate, penetrate, for the Lamb has shed his most pure blood to show you the path by which all of you will reach my kingdom. 16. Blessed children, with my sublime love I have given freedom to your spirit and I have freed you from the chains of sin. With my most precious blood I have given you the opportunity for your spirit to carve out the award and achieve to reach my kingdom. 17. Do you understand me, people? That Sovereign is your Father. The door that opens is the Messiah, your Master, the immolated Lamb, who came to the world to rescue you, shedding his blood to the last drop, to give light and resurrection to your spirit. 18. At this time I have once again entrusted you with an envelope, so that you can restore it, so that you depart from the sin and all the trends of the world, so that step after step you ascend to the mountain where I am waiting with my arms open wide. 19. I have taught you how to rise up in prayer so that you turn away from sin, that you reject temptations, because it is written, the death of the Spirit will be abolished, because I am the way and the life, and the time will come when I remind you. Where is your power, O death? Where is your victory, O grave? Because in truth, the sting of death is sin, and I am abolishing sin at this time with the light of my Holy Spirit. 20. The time will come when you will contemplate the harvest of what you are sowing among humanity. In your hands I have entrusted the farming instruments so that you cultivate the land, and with the good fruits it is fed to humanity. 21. I come to carve your heart with the fine chisel of my word, and to enlighten yourselves with the light of the Holy Spirit. I am the master of teachers who has come to give you the teaching, to forgive you, to lead you on the path of truth, and as the doctor of doctors, I am also among you to heal your spirit of its leprosy and remove its pain. 22. I give you my teaching so that you can put it into practice, so that you carry love and purity in your heart, and although temptation approaches, it does not find a place in you, because with my light and with my love, I make you strong so that you reject all weakness. 23. Blessed people, 
contemplate the world and its wars, draining the cup of pain. But from all this I have saved you. I did not attribute it to chance. You are the graceful people to prepare yourself with my word, to show it to the world, because this is my will. 24. You are my instrument. In your hands I have entrusted my power and my light, so that you dispel the darkness of humanity. 25. By your obedience and fulfillment, you will feel spiritually transformed and united with the spiritual armies, so that in that hereafter, you may continue to be my servants and never depart from me again. 26. I have entrusted this time to you for your preparation, so that you regenerate and climb the mountain step by step. 27. Truly I tell you that my love and the light of my Holy Spirit are poured out on all humanity. But wars have amazed the nations, as my Apostle John contemplated in the second era. And have I prepared these sufferings for you? Am I death? No, children, I am life, and life I have come to give to all my children. 28. In each reincarnation that I have entrusted to your spirit, I have always called you to true life. Moreover, this light is not only for you, chosen people of Israel, because you are the representation of all humanity. 29. I speak to your spirit. I knock on the doors of your heart and make myself felt through consciousness, so that you recognize the responsibility that weighs on your spirit. 30. I have traced only one path for you, because I am one God and one law, and in all times I have given one doctrine, so that the Spirit can do my will. 31. With a word of love I make you recognize that you have not fulfilled your mission, because I contemplate that humanity has been confused, and in its blindness and in its materialism, it has allowed itself to be led by the paths that man has drawn, and this is how he has carried the bandage of darkness in his spirit, and has stripped himself of my grace. 32. Recognize, my people, how many errors humanity carries. For his ignorance he seeks me in his materialism, and his heart he worships false deities. That is why he has not spiritually felt my presence. My children recreated themselves with flowery words, and they believe they are walking on the path of light and truth, without contemplating at this time my spirit as the saving star that sends its light from infinity. 33. I have called you from the world, and although you are clumsy and humble, through you I have poured out my word to clarify to the world my truth with the light of the Holy Spirit so that this humanity is no longer confused, and so that his spirit carries a life of grace, and in his heart feels and carries spirituality. 34. I have selected you to make you possessors of my grace, and so that when you contemplate me, you will rise to rescue your brothers from the abyss, save the shipwrecked from the wide sea of evil, and free the slaves from temptation. 35. In the third era, I find myself calling everyone alike, so that all my sheep return to my fold. 36. I come to rescue the spirit from the darkness and to awaken it from its lethargy, because I have created you and I love you very much, and in the second era for the love of humanity, I shed my blood for your salvation. 37. I have given you many spiritual indulgences, so that you may prepare yourselves and become the soldiers of my divine cause. I have entrusted you with revelation, and through intuition, my messages, so that you understand my will. 38. I have told you, beloved Israel, that the time will come when bad spokesmen will rise up to give access to the false messiah and within their materialism 
will deceive by saying that the Master is speaking through them. They will rise, false guides and false prophets, false soldiers who with their word and materialism want to divert you from the path of light and truth. 39. I have warned you. Remember that every year I have told you. Prepare yourselves, beloved people. Take advantage of my presence and store my word in your heart, so that tomorrow may be your strength, and thus time does not surprise you. 40. I entrusted you with three last years, so that you would get up and prepare yourselves as an example of the spokesman, so that you will be recognized as the true soldiers and the true disciples of the Divine Master. But this grace many of you have retained and have denied it. I have said to Israel, See mankind, how it is wrapped in its darkness, in her fanaticism and idolatry, and for this cause has awakened in her heart the ambition, the greed, the greatness that is puffed up, and all this is abominable before my insightful gaze. But I have enlightened you, I have taken you by the hand so that you rise up to show the world the path of light. 41. I, from the second era, gave you my prophecy to announce the tests that were to take place. I told you that the earth would shake, that the elements would be unleashed, that plague, sickness, and death would sweep away the countries, that the rumor of wars would fill the heart of humanity with anxiety. 42. I am the one who presents myself before humanity as light. I am the one who comes to give the Spirit guidance and entrust my power and my love to him, so that he can bend the flesh, so that it does my will. 43. My justice will stop the warlike momentum of humanity, and they will love each other. There will no longer be selfishness nor greatness or misunderstanding. All will be governed by divine law. All will obey the will of their Creator. There will be peace in the earth, and nations will no longer rise up in war. Science will also recognize me. Everyone will rise looking for the same path, taking the same orientation, and in this world there will be morality, charity, and true unification. 44. It is you, beloved people, who are cleaning and preparing the roads, because large crowds will come. I will prepare behind you and those crowds with my word. 45. How long will that be, Israel? You do not know. But I say to you, rise up to fight, so that humanity receives my peace and my love, and be covered with my divine mercy. 46. The moment in which you still have my word through human understanding is very short. Some, however, speak with respect to their intelligence and say, How could the Father abandon us since he is love? He, as love, has the obligation to be close to us, very close, now that we are in danger, since we have not yet understood his instruction, since he has given us much that we have not yet gathered in ourselves, and we are still weak. He is the loving God who cannot leave us in ruthlessness in the course of time. He is the supreme love which cannot reject us when we offend his law. He as love cannot ask us for justification if we do not obey his supreme will. His word will come, taken only to those places where his law has not been fulfilled. In certain places his light and word will be raised. In the places, however, in which we actively put ourselves at work, he will remain with us. But the Master says to you, I knew that human misunderstanding would be set against my true word as an obstacle, but in the temple of the Holy Spirit, all sects, all religious communities will be united. 47. I have been with you for a long time. I have prepared you. I have marked you with my light as my chosen ones, and I have given my kiss of peace so that you walk with firmness and obedience. The one who has prepared is given to penetrate the arcana of the Father, 
so that he may recognize that my work is not a mystery. 48. Do not feel alone in the world. Take advantage of the charity, peace, and consolation that, in my word, I bring you every day. I want you to know how to walk tomorrow and receive the vibrations of my thoughts. It is necessary that tomorrow, when you no longer hear me through a spokesperson, put my teachings into practice and learn to receive my light spiritually. My spiritual world will be with you in all spiritual manifestation. 49. When you are ready, there will be no barriers or distances for you that prevent you from taking this message of light and peace. You will be for your brothers the example of humility and meekness. For you I will give life and strength. Blessed are those who have grown old working in my countryside, those who being young have become separated from the darkness of the world, because you will have eternal joy. But do not look for the reward in this, do not expect to be exalted, because these vanities would rob you of the grace that I have entrusted to your spirit. Respect the good or bad ideas of humanity. However, you must only hear my voice through your consciousness, so that you unify yourselves and be humble and make yourselves worthy of the respect of men. Parable 50. In one region there was a large crowd of needy people, but a Lord who had great goodness and gifts, he called on them and pointed out the day when he would give them what they needed. When the time came, those needy came before that Lord and said to him, Lord, we have come to your call. We are before your presence. The look of that Lord was full of compassion and mercy in the face of the nakedness and poverty of those in need. Then he asked them, where did they have their dwelling to send them the charity that he was going to entrust to them? And they said to him, Lord, we have no home or shelter. Where the dark night surprises us, there we rest. So that Lord gave them a great deal of his funds and said, If you need more of this charity, come back when you are needy. Now continue on your way. 51. In the same way, the orphan and widowed woman came before that Lord, and he placed charity in their hands. The young men and maidens with their pitiful cry, without peace and without consolation, and that Lord who saw everything, also gave them of his goodness, and covered their nakedness with his cloak. The elders, in whom their strength had been exhausted, arrived, and to them he gave strength, peace, and prosperity. 52. The one and the other left that city. But the day came when the Lord, who had given them much, he had a desire to look again at those crowds, to see if they had known how to take advantage of the riches, or if they had fallen back into poverty. But that Lord contemplated that pain had enveloped them again. 53. The Master asked you, Whom have I told you of? And you answer me, Master of ourselves. 54. After 1950, when you no longer feel me in this way, the great test will be between humanity, also you, beloved people. Trust in my power, my love, and my charity. You will be an example for your brothers, so that through your conduit I save them from the abyss. 55. Humanity is draining its cup of bitterness, and its lament reaches me, but as love and charity, I have always been close to men. I am a father, and what do I do before the cry of humanity? Pour out my love and encourage spirits, as in all times. 56. He who is weak will suffer more for what he receives from the world than for what came assigned to his spirit as a task. Those who look at you with a sinister look and see that you are weak and violate my law, they will also be the ones who tear you apart and point out your lack of fulfillment in my commandments. 57. I have warned you much of the temptation that is near you to confuse you, but you will have to be firm soldiers in the fight 
and you will not weaken before the trials or the snares of evil. 58. Short is the number of my people who have truly prepared to receive my wisdom. 59. I have manifested myself through the humble, the simple, the clumsy of understanding, to give proofs to the world of my power and my wisdom. 60. By various understandings, I have given you my word to correct you and give you my love, my light, my charity, to teach you virtue, so that the multitudes may rise to the life of grace. 61. Humanity is hungry and thirsty for my truth. Its heart harbors hatred, weeds, ill will, and confusion has surprised because the different ideologies have risen to surprise him with different teaching and different law. 62. Penetrate, beloved people, in communion with your God, and do not bow down or venerate material objects, because I have never taught you this, nor have I given you mysticism. I have only poured into your spirit my light and my charity, so materialism does not get in your way. 63. If you watch and pray, if you study and analyze, you will receive much from your master at the end of 1950, because you are the spirits evolved to whom I will entrust much of my charity. But I have told you that if, due to lack of preparation, you do not know how to give testimony of me, the stones will speak and give testimony of my presence among humanity. 64. In my word I have come to clarify what you have not understood, so that you can put aside the errors that you carried in my work. Because, how can you set a good example for your brothers if you have not purged yourself from your past customs? 65. I have forgiven and adorned you, so that later on you will give this charity to humanity. I have entrusted my word to you like a sword of light so that you rise up to the fight and remove the darkness and fanaticism that has penetrated the human heart. Because this is like a bad seed that has multiplied in a great way, and that is why humanity has lost the way of truth and has not been able to seek perfection for the spirit. 66. I come to make the world recognize its mistakes so that it no longer strays from the path that I have traced. On that path there are no thorns or pebbles that make your plant bleed. 67. The man rises to put me to the test without recognizing that at this time all of you are subject to the great evidence, because the world has become puffed up with its science and its flows and has unknown me as its king and lord. By it also men will deny that I have communicated with you through human understanding. But those that do not know me, they will be touched in their spirit with love and charity, so that they awaken and recognize that what they have carved is fleeting, and that the sublime and eternal is in me. 68. People, do not waste the last moments of my communication through the spokespersons, because with my word I will prepare you to face all the trials, to carry the weapons of light with which you will fight against the confusion and selfishness of humanity. 69. Do not feel weak or small, because I have filled you with my charity, my teaching, and my love, so that you rise up like the soldiers of the Third Era. 70. The human heart will feel my love and glorify my divine name. As a father, I do not deny my charity to anyone. I will put out the darkness of the confused, because the light of my Holy Spirit is dispelling the darkness of the world to free the spirits, and these are the ones I have come to save at all times. 71. If you spiritualize Israel, who will be able to reject you on your way? What look will be on you? Which dart? You will only contemplate the smile the joy in the hearts and the hands that reach out to shake yours, and this will be as an anticipated reward for your fight, so that it is not only the pain that you carry in the journey of your working day. 
172. I will still trust you very much in my teaching, so that you may be the warriors who carry the weapons of light, the sword of love, and show high the banner of faith, hope, and charity. 73. What do you still need, Israel? May you rise united in thoughts and deeds. May you regenerate so that you may be the clean mirror where humanity can contemplate its imperfection. My peace be with you.